The Goblin Baby is a supernatural thriller about the first year of motherhood. In the studio with me, I have Shoshana Rosenbaum, the director of the film. Shoshana, thank you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. So, could you give our audience just a brief summary about what the film is about? Sure. Um, as you said, it's a supernatural thriller. Um, it's about a woman who has a new baby and is going through that transition that many um, new parents go through where there's kind of a shift in everything in your life. Um, but she gets the sense that there's, she lives on the edge of the woods and she gets the sense that there's maybe something out there that's a little bit menacing um, and she's not sure if it's sleep deprivation or you know what it might be. So it's kind of a modern take on the change of the idea of changelings, which is an old idea in fo folklore. Right, right. And what inspired you to uh, make the film? Well, I have three kids, and I definitely went through that um, that shift in life when I had my first. And really, it just it all it, the kernel of the idea came from you know being at, a, at home alone in an old house near the woods, <laughs> right. um, with my baby sleeping upstairs, my husband out of town, and just looking at the baby monitor and thinking like, and I'm a writer, so I have these crazy ideas, you know, right. thinking like. What, you know, what if I just heard some eerie sound come over the baby? What would it be? And what would I do? And, you know, just sort of, I like, um, I like stuff that's kind of right on the edge of reality and fantasy. So right. um, that's sort of where it came from. Yeah, that's awesome. And I love how as artists, like that's how anything kind of starts, right? Like what if blah, blah, blah happens and then you just start writing a story and yeah. now you have the Goblin Baby in, your, in the Rosebud Film Festival. That's pretty awesome. Now, The Goblin Baby is your first time out as a director, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so how, how did that start? How did you get into filmmaking? Well, um, I've always been primarily a writer and then a visual artist. I do a lot of photography and painting. Um, and I always, you know, for years have wanted to make a film, but it wasn't until recently that I could really see how I, somebody who I didn't go to film school, it's not really my background, could go about doing it. But with the, the technology becoming a lot more accessible, and then really with crowdfunding, um, I mean, I don't think I could have done this five years ago, but I, I pretty much wrote the script. It was in the DC Shorts Film Festival. It was a finalist, so I got to have a staged reading at the Atlas Theater. Mm. And a lot of people, probably about 150 people, heard it. And enough people came up to me afterwards and said, you know, I can really see that being a movie. And I thought, I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to make an Indiegogo page and, <laughs> you know, put it to start, go into pre production as if, you know, um, this is really happening, and if I raise the money, I'm going to do it, and so it, wow. it worked out. Yeah, that's 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 really awesome because you know sometimes I think we can get a little fearful, right? As just as human beings, uh, I have this great idea; it would be great if. But that's so cool that you actually implemented it. So part of Picture Lock, I, I like to kind of focus on like you know filmmaking, the technology, things like that. But you just brought up a great point in crowdfunding. Was how what was your crowdfunding experience like? It was great. Um, I read a book about it before because I had never done it before. Um, and I had um, Aaron Shirley, who was the co-producer uh, co and the director of photography on film, he said, um, when I brought him on, he said, um, you know, I'll, make, I'll help you make a little pitch video. And I quickly learned that that's kind of the most important thing is to have, you don't have your film made, but you need to shoot something to show kind of the atmosphere, the environment. and. Um, brought on um, another person who was involved with the filmmaking and then we just we kind of talked about why we wanted to make it and what you know and then we edited that down to under two minutes and we, mm. so we had a really good pitch for people to see um, and that was and then we set a goal and just tried to put it out there on social media and with friends and family and it it happened actually a lot faster than we expected I mean we raised our initial goal in 10 days Wow um, was and it over 30 day period or it was a 30 day period okay. um so then my co-producer via Buckspouse and said why don't we um let's have a stretch goal think how much better this could be <laughs> if we raise a little more money and we were like well, okay let's go for it so um then we we raised a little over that um during the, in about 25 days i think so that's awesome so uh, just so i promise we'll move forward from this but you got you do have a great team around you in terms of social media because anytime that we post anything about the Goblin Baby, you guys are just can you talk a little bit about the importance of, you know, just being on top of things as an indie filmmaker, um, socially, uh, on the web. Yeah, I, I think it's really important. Um, and that's something that started in the, you know, kind of pre-crowdfunding because I realized I wasn't on, uh, I mean, I was on Facebook as, you know, with just like high school friends and stuff, but I wasn't on Twitter at all. But I decided to get on those and, and on those platforms and create a Goblin Baby page for Facebook <laughs> um, in advance of the crowdfunding because I knew I really needed to build more of a network. And also I wanted to, as I was planning my own crowdfunding, 
I needed to look at a lot of other indie films that were kind of at my level and see how they did things. Um, and that's great because it's a way, I mean, now I have people that I communicate with like in New Zealand and, you know, <laughs> yeah. who are making films that are similar. And um, uh, yeah, it's, it is important. It's, it's, a, it's a great way to be able to build community, which again, didn't exist, you know. Right, exactly. Ten years ago, so. Right. So what were some of the biggest challenges that you faced on set? Um, probably the weather was we <laughs> we shot yeah. it in the winter um, partly because I wanted that look um, I wanted kind of the starkness of the winter and usually it's not that cold around here I shot it in DC um, we had an unusually cold winter last year mm. so and there's a lot of night scenes in the woods right. <laughs> so we had some long nights and there's a baby in the movie who's a real unlike American Sniper it's I a real gonna, baby <laughs> I was gonna ask that right yeah it's a real baby so um, that was a challenge was keeping everybody warm and comfortable and happy and you know but I had a great team of people who uh, wonderful craft services like lots of hot tea and <laughs> nice. hand warmers and stuff and you know and I mean it was it was a wonderful cast and crew to work with everybody That's stayed awesome. positive yeah cool so I guess on the flip side of that like what's one of, or a couple of your favorite memories for, in making the film um <clears throat> wow in actually the production I mean it, it was just I, I'd say probably one of my favorite memories is we had a discussion so there's a the film kind of leaves things um, ambiguous mm -hmm. in terms of is there something supernatural going on or not. So I remember having a discussion in the, the set for the nursery where we hit the crib and there was a discussion with my two, two of my co-producers over um, really the story. And it was in the middle of filming. We had to decide, should we leave the window open or not? And when you see the movie, you'll understand you know, why this is important. Right. It's a tiny detail that probably many, many viewers are never going to even notice. But we had a, probably a 20 minute discussion, like this is so important to the story right. and to this ambiguity, like how much should the window be open? And that was, I would say one of the most, that was a really fun thing because it showed how invested in the story, in telling the story and getting it right, everybody was. Right, right, and I think that that's awesome because you know, 90% of filmmaking, it always seems like it's like fixing something, right? right. <laughs> there was a lot of that too. But, but I could totally see in, in that scene, if I, uh, the one that I think that it is, yeah, how like that's a huge, is the window open or is it closed? So I, I, you have to come tomorrow to find out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you know, I, I, what I really do appreciate about this film is um, how much I can relate to it. Uh, you know, I'm obviously I didn't birth any children, but my wife did, and um, my son is six months old right now. So I'm still kind of in sleep deprived mode. Yeah. And so, can you talk a little bit about? I'm assuming that maybe this kind of came out of, like you said, having your own children. Um, but the feminist take that you, you put on the on the story. Absolutely. I mean, I think there's a tradition going back to you know Rosemary's Baby, is something you mentioned when you talked about it on WTOP, and that's definitely uh, was an influence for for me and and for us making the film. Um, and there's a there's a tradition which um, of sometimes stories about women and women not being. Um, listen to or maybe being a little crazy or <laughs> yeah. you know a little uh, hormonal or emotional and I thought it was important to tell this story I mean um, written by a woman directed by a woman uh, played by a woman obviously a lot of the I would say about 70 percent of our crew were, were women so wow. um, we had a lot of moms on the side a lot of people who have gone through similar and dads too um, and yeah, I mean, I, I do think of it as a, a feminist take, and as, as our um, lead actress, when we had our kind of friends and family premiere and we had a Q&A, and she talked about, she said, you know, I don't find a lot of parts that where um, a woman gets to kind of determine her own story. She, had a lot, she has a lot of agency, even though she's very vulnerable and she has um, some, you know, some bad things happen and she has some struggles. Um, she also, she determines in the end the path that she takes. And I, I think that's not something you always find. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, we're going to have to wrap up. Shoshana, where can people find you, find the film on the web? Um, goblinbabymovie.com is our website. And um, you can find us on fa Facebook. Give us a like on Facebook or Twitter. It's at Shoshana Rosenbach. Okay, awesome. Well, Shoshana, yeah. thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for the festival. No problem. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.